All right, this week, going to revisit a little something from the past. It's about a year ago or so, I, uh, I did a video about uh, the battle of the, the 55 1.2s. It was between the Canon and the Nikon. Well, I think the Canon uh, 55 deserves its own video because it did really well. It kind of kicked Nikon's butt. But, you know, we want to talk about 55 1.2 SSC. And this is a lens from the 1970s. It's an FD mount. And, uh, hey, it's worth talking about because this is a killer, killer lens. So spend a few minutes with me and let's learn a little bit more about it, right? Here I am. This is Camera Talk with Dr. Scott. All right, this week, just like the intro says, looking at uh, one of my little beauties here. It's a Canon FD 55 millimeter 1.2. Sounds expensive, right? Actually, it was expensive back in the day when it was brand new back in the 70s. Um, the equivalent, if you do the math, you know, of uh, uh, for inflation and today's dollars and everything, it would be worth the same today back then. It would be th about thirteen hundred fifty dollars, uh, perhaps a little more, even closer to fourteen hundred. Why I hate math. But anyway, um, it's an excellent lens. You know, it's worth every penny, and you can buy it now. I mean, I just checked on eBay uh, earlier earlier today, and it was uh, the cheapest one was about two hundred and fifty ish. Uh, so you can get it between 200 and 300 in that range. Now, of course, it's Big Bad Brother, the yeah, spherical um, version of this same lens. It's roughly between 3,500 bucks and 5,000. Who wants to pay for that? I mean, those are those are Leica prices, and that 55, that spherical. There's no comparison with this and, and that. But anyway, that's that's another story. Um, anyway, you know. Uh, Canon went through uh, went through a little bit of a change when it had the FL mount uh, and throughout the 60s you know it was, it was building a good reputation and whatnot and then on with the uh, out came the FD mount in the early 70s you know 1971 through 1990 until the you know until again the EOS mount uh, came along but um, so that FD mount went through a few iterations of its own uh, but this one's one of the earlier, earlier ones, um, this is 1973. And, you know, at that time, the new, new fad for the day was, uh, multi-coding. Um, and everybody was marketing their multi-coding in a number of different ways. Canon was doing it with, uh, SSC, which stands for super, super spectra coding. Super spectra coding. That's right. No, not spectra like the James Bond spectra, but what is spectra? It still sounds kind of cool, right? But all it really means is multi coding. Nothing all that special. But SSC sounded sounded cool, and they even printed it printed it in red on the uh, on the nameplate of the of the lens itself. So anyway, it was a cool. It is a cool lens. You know, here we are you know, 40 some odd years later. And, uh, you know, it's just as, just as uh, killer as it was back then. You know, it has its, obviously it has its vintage look, you know, the character that people call it and whatnot. But, you know, again, for a lens this old, the image quality is super, the build quality is super, the way it, uh, the way it captures color in, in, you know, when you print out or you can just look at it on your screen. You can see the colors kind of pop off the screen kind of thing, you know. Contrast, which was a big deal back in the day. You know, a lot of old vintage lenses, you have to add contrast in, in post. But this lens, you don't even need to. There's plenty of contrast in there as well. Um, you know, again, it's a super, you know, a super... Um, Superman! Um, Again, a character lens, something you can you can use for portraiture, you can use for landscape, you can use for architecture and whatnot. Now, of course, the aperture settings are going to be completely different for each one of those. But again, at 1.2, um, you know, your your uh, portraiture is going to turn out 
pretty nice because it's a little softer at 1.2. It's still sharp, but it's not sharp, sharp, you know, as we expect today. Um, you know, that doesn't happen. It gets sharper at 2 and 2.8, but really, once you get to, you have to get to about F4 before you consider it sharp, like this is sharp, and maybe 5.6 to, to really sharpen it up. But again, for a lens of its age, you know, it's got plenty, plenty going for it for, you know, a couple hundred bucks uh, when you buy this thing. It's, um, you know, another thing too is it separates the subject from the background, which is, you know, again, another modern type of feature that goes into the, into the lenses. Now, again, there, there's a difference between this one here and the a spherical, it's big brother kind of thing. The spherical has one extra lens, a handmade uh, a spherical lens and, and Canon in their FD 55 1.2 was actually the first um, to, to produce a, an a spherical lens for an SLR camera. Now, of course, Leica was doing it for their range finders, but that's a whole different story. But for your SLR cameras, C Canon was the first one to do that with, uh, with their uh, 55 1.2. Now, of course, with the spherical one too, for those who are thinking of, uh, you know, rushing off to buy one for three thousand or four thousand dollars, what the fuck? Uh, be aware too if you're a little paranoid of uh, radioactivity, that that a spherical lens, um, that uh, model with the spherical lens, uh, uses thorium uh, doped glass in there, so it's a tad bit on the radioactive side. So what does that mean? Well, it could mean one of two things. One, either you use it on your camera and after a while you'll notice your hair falling out, or your teeth might start loosening or whatever. Or the more likely one is that nothing will happen to you at all. It's no big deal because the amount of radiation coming out of that lens is not enough to make your hair fall out or anything else. So um, even though I got to wonder if that's happening to me today, I had my by the way, I had my uh, AstraZeneca uh, COVID-19 shot today. So that was this morning. So I'm not uh, experiencing any side effects. I hope not. Well, you know, if I'm going to keel over and, uh, you know, all of a sudden a blood clot goes to my head and I drop dead. Hey, this will be a first for YouTube, right? YouTuber drops dead during making a video. I've never had things like this before. Oh, this is the worst one I ever had, son. <laughs> Well, this is a big one. I'm dying. Um, but that's also not likely to happen either. So moving on, um, you know, uh, one of, you know, going through some of the, the specs on this thing, I mean, it, it is a little on the hefty side, you know, compared to some of the lenses, you know, I have a 55, um, 1.8, um, Sony lens, you know, native Sony lens, Zeiss lens. Um, that's nowhere near the, the weight of this thing. And it's all plastic for one thing. This is all metal, metal construction. Um, you know, there's a night and day difference between using these two lenses, but that one, my size 55 is, you know, it's a native lens for Sony for one thing. It's autofocus, it's super sharp, and you know, everybody loves that lens. But if you actually give this lens a shot, it'll surprise you as well and probably get you kind of hooked on manual focus lens because again it's not autofocus there was no autofocus in 1973 so um you know again for fast action shots everything else sports or you know the greyhound races or something like this eh, may not be the the ideal lens in this day and age for it but for portraiture and stuff that I'm into anyway, it is ideal, even though my little subject, my son Dylan, Aww. who just turned 15 months, uh, you know, a week or two, two weeks ago. Anyway, he's like a, he's like, he got ants in his pants, you know, he's all over the place. Real difficult to get him to sit down and get some nice portraiture pictures, even though I did yesterday, two days ago. Um, you know, he just woke up from his nap. I put him on the sofa and Actually, I think I did it with my M10 here, but still I managed to get in and get him some, get some good, nice shots of him with him just staring straight at the camera without moving and everything is very nice. 
but those are rare. Those are rare moments in time. So, um, but anyway, I'm going to give you some shots of Dylan. Um, you know, obviously they're not stage shots; they're just kind of snapshots. But you know, I'm going to get you uh, some shots of Dylan at f 1.2 just to show you wide open. Um, you know what what the um, possibilities are with 1.2. Um, and I'm also going to mix a couple of uh, pictures I got of uh, my wife um, at f1.2 as well. So, hey, let's take a look at those right here. And, um, ah, one thing I forgot to do is my standard operating procedure, which is take a shot of the face plate of my, uh, my M50, my Canon M50 that's, uh, filming this right now. So let me do that. Um, so I'm going to be kind of reversing this. So I'll show you the, the shots of Dylan and my wife first, and then the shot of the, the camera. Usually I do it the other way around, but. All right, fine. For this uh, for this moment in time, let me uh, let me do the reverse. So uh, let me focus in on the nameplate, which is the lettering. And one, two, three. So this will basically show you, you know, how sharp it is. You know, I'm a meter and a half away, or about five feet away from the from the camera. So it'll show you the uh, the um, you know, printing on the nameplate as well as the the effect of the background, you know, the quality of that out of focus background called the bokeh. So here's a shot of at 1.2. Alright, next I'm going to take us to what did I use next? F2. I think um, I moved to. So at F2, here's a shot of Dylan. And I didn't do any shots of my wife, so you're only going to get Dylan for F2 and F4, I think I did. So here's a uh, shot of the nameplate at F2. Let me move that to F2 and kind of get my magnifier in so I get it as sharp as possible. All right, there we go. One, two, three. All right, so... There you go, that was the nameplate. And lastly, a uh, shot of Dylan at F4. Alright, and let me give you a shot of... Um, shot of the nameplate also at F4. Uh, very nice. All right, one, two, three. And as you can see, the out of focus background is still nice at uh, at that range. So again, this was this was the uh, you, know, you know just sample shots of f one point two, f two, and f four to show you what that's like. Um, and did I show you Dylan at F4? What you talking about, doctor? Also, I'm gonna toss in some uh, some random shots too of of other portraits or you know other portraits taken with this lens, as well as uh, maybe some random nature shots, some trees and you know just things outside to show you you know what it can do outside with the again the out of focus background. Now at 1.2, again that. Uh, um, you know, the bokeh can be pretty, you know, I guess painterly, like somebody did some Van Gogh uh, work in the background. The difficult part is convincing yourself that it's easy. But, you know, stopping down to 2, 2.8, it smooths itself out. F4 gets a lot smoother in that regard. But, um, but really, it's, uh, I can't emphasize that enough. This is a super lens. So let me show you some random shots using this with... Uh, 
using this lens you know in some other genres as well as some portraiture Okay, well that was that was that. So again, just to wrap this up, this is the 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 55, um, you know, 1.2 SSC. And hey, you know what I think I forgot to do was talk about the specs of this thing. So I've shown you all the samples, <laughs> what it can do, but what's this sucker made of? Well, again, it's all it's all metal. You know, it's a it's a great. Uh, um, a great construction, you know, build quality and whatnot. But technically, it is seven elements in five groups. Um, the spherical is eight in six groups. But with this one, it's seven in five. Um, the close focus is uh, 60 centimeters, which is 23.6 inches. Um, so, you know, my uh, Leica here is 70 centimeters so it's this one's a little shorter than this one that's what she said that's what she said that's but it's still not as short as some of my lenses here which can do like 30 centimeters or even less you know it's um so 60 it's okay but it's like definitely not you're get, not going to get any macro photography out of this out of this lens but still 60 centimeters is not that bad it's got eight aperture blades so again the uh you know quality of the bokeh you can get rounder bokeh balls so to speak with eight blades than you do with six, you know, with a lot of blade or a lot of uh, uh, lenses out there with with fewer number of blades, but eight is not bad. the uh, The weight of this thing, as I told you, is kind of hefty. It's 500 and 565 grams, which is about roughly 20 ounces. Not quite 20, but 19.9 something ounces. So it's a little hefty, you know, um, but it's not that bad. It kind of balances itself well on my, uh, I use a Sony a7R2. Um, so it's a smaller mirrorless camera and it's, and it's not bad. So again, what I just said too about mirrorless, all these, all these vintage lenses are ideal for mirrorless because there's, you know, there is no, you know, uh, risk of, of smashing your mirror or anything uh, using on a, on a regular SLR. So ideal for that situation for sure so that's that was the uh, the technical aspects of the of the lens it ranges from 1.2 to the f16 um, you know again it's it's got kind of the best of everything um, for that kind of money a couple hundred dollars is, is nothing really and there's plenty of them out there you know it's not like they're rare or anything um, so you know, as opposed to the spherical ones, it's kind of a collector lens. When people grab them, they tend to hang on to them for a while until they go way up in price and figure they can make, make some money on it or, or something. But still, this is a great, uh, great little lens. So that was the end of that. Um, so let me move on now to talk about a um, uh, little plug for Luminar. It's my uh, uh, photo editing software that I use. I use both Luminar and Luminar AI. Again, economical. You know, this is, again, this is, this is modesty photography. You know, we're here to save you money. We're here to give you little tips on things. Good for beginners and so forth and so on. But, you know, um, you know, of course, well, I spend a little bit of money on something. But still, most of my stuff is pretty economical anyway. It's good for the budget. And Luminar is ideal for that. It's about $89 full price. You know, it's on sale a lot of times, but $89 for something that's yours for life. You download it and put it on your computer or up to three or four or five computers. I forget how many you can load on there. Um, and you know, when they upgrade, little upgrades, you're all free. Only major updates uh, to a whole new version is gonna cost you more. But if you buy it the first time, the second time, it's again a discounted price anyway. But if you want a further discount, click below. I've got a $10, uh, $10 off link down there. Uh, a little kickback for Dr. Scott, which is always nice. Uh, I always need a little help with my, with my channel anyway. So get out there and expose me. Um, but that said, hey, how about you subscribe to my channel? Hmm? 
And in case you kind of just missed that, subscribe. And hey, why don't you get your, uh, your loved one or your friends or anybody to subscribe too? Yeah. Do, uh, do Dr. Scott a favor. And also give me a thumbs up. Why not, right? Thumbs up doesn't hurt, even if you hated this video. But I think if you've hated it, you wouldn't be sitting here this long anyway. But uh, So give me a thumbs up, and here's a thumbs up, girl, to support that action. And last but not least, um, hey, stay safe out there, will you? You know, this Delta variant is out there kicking butt in the world, and... Uh, you know, I like to compare that Delta virus or that variation of the, of the coronavirus, COVID-19, even though we're in COVID-21 version now. But uh, I like to compare that to my, to my uh, chicks with the shovel, shovel to the head. Shit, okay, oh my God. That's exactly what Delta does. It hospitalizes you. <laughs> so anyway, come on back next week. Because this was Camera Talk with Dr. Scott. And remember, you belong here. That's right. So stay safe. Social distancing. Get your vaccine. I got mine this morning. Feel it right here. Actually, I can't feel it. Just my little Band-Aid. Dylan was smacking it constantly. I'm like, what is that? And I thought, huh, see, that doesn't even hurt. I didn't even actually feel the jab. You know, that's how, how uh, nonchalant it is. But anyway... Don't get the virus because it'll probably not do nice things to you. So we'll see you next week, right? Come on back for more. And uh, thanks for dropping by. All right, so we'll see you in another video. All right, bye-bye. Here I am, VAM. Green is all waiting.